it's uh, it's really I'm really happy we can all be doing this. Uh, Ted was a very big influence on my life uh, for more than 25 years. So um, I'm really happy we're going to start gathering people to talk about Ted's works. How did you guys feel about the the worksheet? I know that uh, Liam was saying he was okay with it, but was the worksheet pretty straightforward going you know into the material? Yes. Yeah. It was, sorry. Yeah, it was good overall. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Okay, and everybody was comfortable. Do you, what I would normally do if I were teaching someone Ted Green is I would do a breakdown of like all of the different uh, aspects of how you can look at Ted's stuff. Um, unless there's some specific questions about the, uh, about the arrangement, maybe we could do a quick thing where we all introduce ourselves. Sure. And, um, and then we we'll, can go through the chart. How's that? Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. Cool. Yeah, uh, yeah. Michael, do you want to start? Uh, sure, that would be me. I'm Michael Neverisky. I'm um, joining you from the United States, New Hampshire, the northeast corner. Beautiful day here today. Um, I've been playing the guitar since I was a kid. Um, did some classical guitar study, um, spent decades playing kind of ragtime finger picking, and decided to make a concerted effort to learn something about jazz guitar about a year and a half ago. Uh, and Ted Green crossed my awareness, and I'm just sort of beginning to step along that path. So I'm glad to be here and join you guys. Great. Thanks, Michael. Nice to meet you, Mike. Hey, it looks like it's coming up clean cut carpentry, but my name is David. I'm uh, Denver, Colorado. Um, and I've been playing guitar for about, um, I'd say, 25 years. I turned 40 on Sunday. Um, so that was a big one. But um, I'm feeling good. And I actually, it's funny. I picked this up. I, I discovered Ted Green. I, I can't remember when, but about three years ago. And I, I picked this up. I, I tried it and I just threw in the towel. Um, and I had shoulder surgery in November. So I went to tedgreen.com. I wasn't playing and I just kept studying and studying. So it's funny, John, that you picked this up because now I got a second crack at it and I can make it through it. It's not pretty, but um, yeah, I'm digging it. So Glad to be here. Well, we're neighbors, you and me. Boulder, right? I'm in Longmont, but yeah, we're neighbors. Love it. Yeah, beautiful state. Uh, cool, man. Um, Liam? Uh, okay, yeah, I'm Liam Murray. We are um, definitely not neighbors. I'm coming to you from Scotland, from the west <laughs> coast of Scotland. It's just going 5 p.m. where I am. Uh, yeah, I've been playing guitar for about probably 30, 35 years. Uh, Self-taught, the usual kind of boring route just through blues and rock and stuff but about 10 years ago I started uh, get you guys may be familiar with Martin Taylor of course, uh, yeah. so Martin mm -hmm. Taylor Martin Taylor lived he's slightly further north now but he lived uh, he lived very near here so he used to there was a, a music night where he would occasionally get up and play but obviously he is exceptionally good but that got me interested in a finger style guitar and moving away from just the kind of blues rock I'd been doing. Stumbled across Ted Green uh, eight, nine years ago, just as I was getting into that. Always really admired watching him play when I've seen that, but always really struggled to, to learn it, which is why I'm looking forward to this. Um, and more or less now, that's what I do in terms of gigging. I do some gigging locally here, doing, as I say, what you might call Martin Taylor Light or Joe Pass, that type of thing, just chord melody stuff. But obviously Ted and his, his many voicings and stuff like that is kind of integral to that as well. So very much looking forward to this. I don't know how to pronounce your name correct, so tell me if I'm wrong. Raquel? Ra Ra I don't know. Yeah. So that's uh, my name is Darren. So I'm um, it's my girlfriend's Zoom account. So her ah, name is Rachel. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, I just want to mispronounce it. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm from Mumbai, uh, Mumbai, India, and I've been playing off around 15 years. And I recently started getting into arrangements, so I started loving uh, being able to arrange tunes for the guitar. And I came across Ted through uh, a professor of mine. So I studied one semester under Sid Jacobs. I don't know if you guys have heard of him. He's a great instructor from MI. So he had come down to India, so I studied one semester through him. And he introduced me to Ted, and then I heard the album, and just completely blown away and yeah i would love to learn uh, from him i mean i just have been going through the chart it's a little over my head but if we can break it down a couple of times that would be good i'm gonna me. break it down I'll, and, I'll break uh, it down for you. yeah that's about it i've worked on a cruise ship on two cruise ships as a musician so jazz is something new for me but it's really exciting cool 
So yeah, that's why I'm here. There's a great teacher in Mumbai. Do you know uh, B.C. Manjanath? He's, He's a, a conical, conical yeah. instructor. I, I yeah, yeah. I study with him. He's amazing. Wow. He's amazing. I've been studying conical yeah. with him a little bit online through Berkeley for the last few months. But I've been listening okay. to him for years. He's a great teacher. Really great mm -hmm. teacher. Yeah. Well, welcome here. Thanks. Colin? Hi. Oh, okay. No, sorry. Uh, yeah, so I'm Colin. Uh, I'm 20, year, 20 years old. I've been playing since um, I've been by like 12 or 13. And I got into Ted basically. I had his books, but I never really looked into him till about last year. And I started listening to his albums and I was just blown away, or his album. And I just started, I was blown away by it. So, um, yeah, I just uh, really like his music and trying to learn his arrangements and stuff at the moment. Good for you. It's a lifetime yeah. practice, Colin. It's, it's yeah, it is. Yeah. I, I met, I met He's Ted when I was 17, and I, I'm almost 60 now. And I met Ted when I was yeah. 17, and I studied with him pretty regularly for 25 years. And wow. there's another guy in Denver, actually, a guy named Mitch Shamara, who's probably... Yeah, Mitch is great. Mitch is probably the closest thing to Ted you can, you can get. Um, right. maybe even more advanced in some ways. Um, but there's, there's a few of the older students like Mitch and myself, a guy named Tim Lurch, uh, a couple other guys. Yeah, we're, we're great. Tim's good guy. Very good player. Very good. Player. I've studied with Mitch here. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. Well, he's, I, I'm pretty lucky. Yeah. Mitch is, he's solid. He's pretty, yeah, he's, he's, he's great. Mitch scares me. I love the guy, but Mitch, yeah. <laughs> I've known him since I was like, I think 18 or 19 and, he, Mitch was a monster back then. So yeah, um, he's great. If you guys ever get a chance to go on uh, YouTube, look up a guy named Mitch Shamara, C-H-M-A-R-A. -A. He literally plays like everything. And he plays it like, you know, if he's playing like Holdsworthian or George Bensian or Scott Henderson or whatever, whatever the style of it is that he's doing, he's doing it in sixth gear. And it's, it's pretty extraordinary and it's very beautiful. Like what he can do on the instrument is pretty amazing, especially the chord melody stuff. So um, if it's okay with you guys, I'm gonna share the screen. Let's do this. Uh, this and that. So tell me if you guys are seeing, what are you guys seeing right now? Yeah, I see the yeah, chart. I see it. Do you see me moving the chart? The chart? I move the, yeah. the And you see my mouse? Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. So the, the first thing I do with the Ted Green piece, so the, the reason I chose this particular piece is for a number of reasons. Um, one, there's no real rhythmic issue that you need to be thinking about. Okay, so except for three places in the entire song, they're all quarter notes, essentially. In other words, the essential rhythmic value that Ted's wanting you to be thinking about is a quarter note, except for in the first bar, this little indication right here means it's two beats. And the way Ted's notation works is that essentially an X is a melodic note within that chord. So in this particular case, it's a moving bass line that he wants you to play as the second quarter note. So the chord is beat one and the bass note is beat two. And then the only other place that occurs is in the fourth measure on the A flat minor nine, you have an eighth note with that X there. And I think you have an optional zero here down in the 11th bar on the E flat 13 chord, you have an optional F natural. So you can play that. But essentially what Ted wants you to do is hear this as quarter notes in a 12 bar blues. Okay. Is that, is that pretty clear to everyone? Mm -hmm. yep. when, you, when I'm, when I'm working through this, generally what I'll do is I'll try and understand what Ted is trying to get me to hear. This particular piece is an exercise in chromatic approach and tritone substitution. Everyone knows what that is. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. But what he's also doing, which you may not be so obviously seeing, is he's also doing a substitution where minor chords are being substituted by dominant chords, which is something you can do. Any minor chord can be substituted by an altered dominant chord because you'll still get that same motion of energy. Um, and it's a melodic issue with what Ted's doing. So do you guys want me to break the harmonic thing down or do you just want to look at how to play it? I... <laughs> I'm comfortable where I get a little bit confused harmonically and I maybe just need to put more thought in is 
I, I do the same thing as you, which is I just it just it's just a twelve bar blues, so it should it could just be three chords really, right. you know G C and D. Where I get, I get in the last few bars, I struggle, and I don't know whether that's because there's quite a lot of alterations in the line, or there's elevenths and stuff like that, and it's maybe just that's where the boundary of my knowledge is. I don't want to hold everybody back if no, no, that's no, where no, they're... It's a really good where... question. It's a very good question. So that's just a standard turnaround where he's going... It's a so one, that just three, it's a one, one three, three, five. Yeah, yeah, okay. Because right. all he's doing there is he's doing a one passing chord, F7 sharp nine, which also, just for the record, is B7 or B minor 7. Right, okay. Right? So ah, he's, right. going, he's walking down to get to that six. So he's playing um, one passing chord, six, and then another passing chord to get to two, right? right. And then to two, and he's doing a two dominant instead of two minor, and then flat tritone substitution to get to the five. Ah, right. Okay. Yeah. Right. And then ah, so right. He's just, all he's playing is. It's just yeah. a one six two five, but yeah. with, but the thing is, and this is a great. It's great that you asked that. So when you're looking at something that Ted's given you, I don't care what it is, like any chart that Ted gives you, Ted's trying to show you something. Like in the really creative solo arrangements, which we can get to in a couple of weeks, it's more complicated because he's showing you his artistic sensibility of how to play a solo arrangement. But in the worksheets like this, he's trying to show you. This particular thing, he's trying to show you tritone substitutions, chromatic approach chords. Um, and the cool thing about this chart is you can do a chromatic approach to any one of the chords as an eighth note. That's the more advanced. So let me step back a second. Anything Ted gives you, you can take this one chart and spend a year of your life on it. Because there's a million ways of exploring how this works. So for example, just the first opening bar, right? Just that particular sequence of chords, you can approach everything, you know, chromatically. Right? Or any one of those is an eighth note. Okay? But right now, let's just look at the basic structure of the tune. You've got one and then a tritone substitution. I'll use my mouse to see if I can help. And then four walking bass line to get to two of four. So it's like a two five. So G minor and C, back to one, and then it's like a one, five, one, and then he's doing a two, five here to get to the four chord. So this sequence of that G7, D7 is the important thing that's happening here is that bass line. Can you guys hear that? So yeah. another, another approach you can take when you're working through the tune is actually just play the bass line to start. So, I mean, if I were working on this by myself at the beginning, I would play. Right. You can hear the melody. And Ted's whole thing was melody. And if you actually can do that with any voice in the sequence, so take the second voice from the bottom and the third voice and follow that through the sequence, you'll hear the four melodies that Ted's trying to get you to hear. Because essentially all these are four note, four, no, uh, four note chords, right? So there's four melodies that are happening simultaneously when you're trying to break this down. And when I work on this tune, I start with the basic quarter note principle of, um, Sorry, I don't need to be flat there. So you can hear that there's two different melodies that are happening, right? If you need to break it out, play the bass line and then play the chord as the next eighth note, right? So you play. So. Can 
you guys hear that? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. That'll really help you guys understand the difference, the relationship of the melodies, because he's writing this really beautiful melody in the bass, and then the counterpoint of what's happening in the highest voice is what the piece is all about. And then if you want to get really stupid, <laughs> you can do it as triplets. So you can go. sense to you guys yeah and when you yep. take that yeah. thing when you take that up in like up to tempo like if you take that and you're I, I don't know if i haven't played this in years so right and then it becomes a then it becomes a tune Right, Ted stuff isn't intended to be a mechanical exercise. You can you can make it into a piece of music, and it's what you bring to it that makes it interesting. Right, so based on what I've just gone over, do you want me to continue doing the chord breakdown of what's happening, or do you guys want to talk about anything specific? Is well, I have a basic basic question. Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Oh. There's 12 bars here, uh -huh. right? I'm getting that. And I can make it through this tune, but the question that I have in there may not be an answer for, uh, an easy answer for this. Where would the one chord fall? Where would the four and the five chord? So am I correct in saying that the first four measures belong to the one chord, regardless of what's being played? Yeah, you're, you're absolutely correct. Is that correct. an accurate statement? You're, you're actually correct. The first measure that you're seeing here is actually four beats. So this is bar one, bar two, bar three, bar four. So here's the one chord. Here's the four chord, right? Back to the one chord. Where does the, what, what bars um, belong to the four chord? It kind of goes to the, it goes to the four chord in the second bar as well, doesn't it, John? Kind of. Yeah, it's a quick turn. Yeah. Quick turn, yeah. Yeah, it's a quick turn on the four chord. So it's, it's, like, it's like if you're playing Chicago style blues, actually do this as a Chicago blues. Right? Just changing the rhythmic value of everything. It's still blues. No, I mean, it's still blues. Still a blues. So and I don't, it's, and I don't know if this is helpful or, or a hindrance, but I sometimes, if you just look at the first chord in each bar, that normally gives what he's doing in the subsequent bits. Then is normally, as you say, a tritone or a, some kind of substitution. But the first chord of the first bar is the one, then it goes to the C, then it goes back to the one, then it goes to the it stays on the one, then it goes to the fourth again. You can almost use that as a, it's, not a a fail, it's not fail safe, but it's a good guide. Yeah. Yeah, his, the only places where I can see it can get confusing is where you get to uh, bar one, two, three, four, five, six. bar eight, where he's doing the, you know, this. Yeah. 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 But all he's really doing is three, six, two, five. Yeah. It's just, it's, it looks way more complicated than it is. It actually is, yeah. But it's not. And Ted, the whole thing about Ted is, is it's all, like, for example, let's, if you guys played um, one, six, two, five and C, you guys see my hands? Yeah. yeah. Right? That's a straight one, six, two, five. C major, A minor, D minor, G, right? Ted would play it like this. Same chord. <laughs> it's the exact same, but it's the exact same chords. All he's thinking is, is inner melody line and how do I get from one place to the next? This is still C, right? Um, 
A minor, uh, D minor, G altered, C, right? It's, he's not yeah. thinking like really super complicated stuff, but what he does is he knows a lot of voicings. I think I, if it helps anybody, I, one of the breakthroughs for me about eight, nine years ago, coming from a blues rock background is I remember believe, thinking blues and rock is simple. It's one, four, five or one, three, you know, it's easy. And when I looked at jazz, I assumed it didn't have a structure just because it seemed when you certainly if you look at a chart like that, if you're only a blues guitarist, it would freak you out. But when you learn that jazz, well, jazz is, is, is two, five, one as much as <laughs> blues is one, four, five. Once you learn that it does actually have just pretty much just as rigid a structure as anything else, and then just uses embellishments and substitutions and alterations round about that, but it is still going to be three or four chords that are anchoring everything. That was a breakthrough for me, realizing that, because I spent years not really getting that. Yeah, that's correct. Most of what Ted, so since we're in a Ted group, and I can just, I mean, I'm a blues guy. That's how I've made my living most of my life. I was in a number of different bands. I, I played with a lot of well-known blues musicians. And, you know, mostly what Ted knew me for was, you know, I was the guy, right? I was that guy. But, and Ted liked that because I wasn't trying to come in and play like Ted. I wasn't trying to just, but I love chords. It was like, we used to play this game where he would be in his kitchen and I would find some insanely painful, stupid chord that I'd worked on for a month and he'd be in the kitchen and I'd play and he'd go, yeah, do you ever try playing it like this? And it would be an even more insanely stupid, hard part. You know, it was, it was, he was, I had a love of harmony and melody. And so, you know, as a blues player, it actually became quite valuable to me. Um, and, you know, Robin Ford has talked about this a lot that, you know, he, um, in certain circumstances, being able to have a more extended sense of melody and harmony when you're playing in the more basic forms lets him sound different and have his own voice. So I don't sound like a traditional blues player, although I can. I'm more interested in the harmonic and melodic things that I can do. And, I, and on the records that I produced about Ted, I say really clearly, I'm not a solo guitarist. I'm not Ted at all. I, I spent years making those records. Like the first record took me a year and a half to record 10 arrangements. And the second record took me two years, you know, to record with these kinds of harmonic approaches. So it's not like something that comes entirely naturally to me. Okay, it's 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 something that you have to really work at. You know, I I mean, a, let's take a C chord, a normal C chord, right? That's a normal C chord. But for me, I'll look at an inversion. And I'll go, well, there's the there's the fifth, and there's the third, and there's the root, and there's the sharp eleven, and there's the fifth again. And I go, oh, that's a cool chord. And then I'll spend a month going, where can I use that? Right? And I'll spend, I'll look at tunes and I'll find places to put it. These kinds of exercises are all about developing a relationship between your ear, like what sounds can occur, and understanding how to get to them. Like a lot of times if you're playing blues, you're not going to know that you can go to get to the four chord. Okay. okay. So let's do this. Let's, does anybody want to volunteer to just sort of walk through like what they were able to do with like the first, like, I don't know, eight bars? Come on, anybody. Sure, I can do I that. I can maybe try, oh yeah, go ahead. I think step on anybody's toes, right? You guys, both you guys, let's do that. At the same time, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Michael, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, well, let me see if I'm plugged into something here. I don't know, maybe, maybe you should go because I don't think I have any sound coming out of this guitar. Okay, can you guys hear me? Yeah. 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 Okay, so, so I'll just uh, play and I'll tell you what I've understood and maybe uh, hopefully that makes sense. So the first two bars, so, so you're just playing a G for the first two bars, then a passing note, and he's anticipating the C9, so he's playing that from a, Can sorry? Can G chord a little bit more? Ah, thank you, okay. Yeah. And then the inversion. Right. Right, and then a half step into the C, so from above. So into the four chord, right? And then the passing to the G minor seven, that, C seven, C thirteen uh, is what I'm thinking. Yeah. Right. Then another G. 
and then a C with the D on the base or D7, then an inversion of a G, then a minor, D minor 9, going to the G7, then the two half step, okay, good. and then he plays just inversions of C9, I mean, just inversions of C here, so. C minor 9, F9, C minor 7. And then this kind of a... Uh, Watch your melody on the F7. You want to, so I'm from here. Sorry? So after, you want to watch the melody, so. Try and get that, that A natural to really sing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. I'll watch out for that. Okay. So that's that's really good. Now, maybe could you play it in time, just so it feels like so it can be quite slow, but play it in time. Let me. I'll I'll give it a shot. Okay. Just play really slow, super slow. Okay. Uh, this chord is gets to me. But no, no, no. It's, first of all, never be sorry about music. Let's let's do that. Ted's Ted's very very clear about a couple of things. Everybody plays at a different level, and everybody's at a different stage in their learning process, right? So being mm -hmm. being somewhat gentle with yourself about how you learn this is a really important part of working with Ted's materials. Like it's not it's not sure. it's not problematic. You can't do a certain passage. Um, I just want to help you with that one G seventh chord. So do you know C seventh in the root position? This one. Yep. It's the same chord. It's just your okay with the bass with the bass notes. Bass notes. On the fifth, yeah. Exactly okay. Chord. So it'll it'll be maybe more comfortable for you. It is. It is already. Yeah, I can think of it this way now. Yeah, yeah. I'm not big on the cage system shapes. One of the big things that Ted and I worked a lot about is there's a difference between geography and geometry and playing. Right, so geography and geometry means like I can take this shape and this geography, so I know it's C7 here because it's this shape, and then it's G7 here because I've moved the geography and kept the geometry, right? That, that doesn't interest me as, as a guitar player because that's just playing math. It's good to know that as an option, but I mean, I, I would rather know that, and then that I can move to this G7. It's a little bit more, uh, it's this, you guys are used to seeing that. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and that's another thing I want to talk very quickly about is, um, uh, we may be running out of time, gentlemen. Uh, I don't know how that's going to work, but if, cause I'm on the pro version. So if we get cut off, I apologize. Um, alternate fingerings. Don't think of everything as one particular fingering. So for example, on this G7 chord at the very top, you can also play it like this. Right? And there's a reason why you might want to do that, is if you want to get that F natural with the close second. Isn't that a nice sound? Right? Yeah. So you've got this bar, you've got this, and you can use the side of your finger, and then you've got this. Yeah. Okay? So don't get locked into thinking a specific fingering, but Ted gives you all of this stuff. Um, Michael, do you want to take a shot? I think we've got a few more minutes before we're going to get locked out. Yeah, just real quickly. And actually, it's a good point. And following up on that third measure, the, the G7 to the D7 down to the G7 again. Yes. So when I see these grips, you know, I, I automatically go to certain configuration of my fingers, which turns out maybe are not optimal for what's coming up. So uh, like the, the D7, I might play with my second finger. You can't see, but my second finger on the sixth string. And then you've got this big sort of configuration change of all your fingers to the next one. Okay. So it kind of makes more sense, I wonder if, if Ted ever spoke to this, to keep your third finger down on the sixth string. Um, that's, there's, he, doesn't tell, he doesn't really talk about fingerings unless he gets specific. Like in the solo guitar arrangements, he'll get very specific about fingerings because they're just too hard. 
Um, in the, in the, this sort of stuff, you can work out your, what works for you. The way I do this when I don't know an arrangement and it's very difficult is I will actually take a sequence and I'll play it a hundred times so that, so that it's under my fingers and right. Uh, also, I just want to mention, be careful about over pressuring. Like I know it's uncomfortable to play in front of people that you don't know, but find the right amount of pressure that like gets you to sing the notes. But like my hands completely relaxed right now, both hands are completely relaxed. There's no, even if I'm doing vibrato on the strings, my hands are relaxed. You don't need to, I mean, you find the way I was shown it is, play the chord and then start releasing pressure until it stops letting the notes ring. And then when it starts making the note ring again, that's how much pressure I need to make the chord or the note or the melody work. And then I'm relaxed, even here. When you watch Ted play, he does this thing where his hand oscillates above the strings where he's like doing this thing and he's not touching the strings. I used to think for years that that was just some weird thing. Sh shit's happening when he does that. I don't know why, but like he's, I think he's either reminding himself to be relaxed unconsciously or he's hes preparing to move to the next thing or if he's doing, you know, harmonics. He's keeping his hand relaxed, right? Um, I'm watching time, so let's let's. My, why don't you do a quick pass at this? The first like eight bars. Yeah, well, we can move. We can move on. But I, I don't know if I can do it any better than the other gentleman. But yeah. Lost my place. And on like that. No, that's that's great. My my encouragement, I think, what I'm hearing, and a lot of it, you're, you guys are all playing it way too fast. Like it's it's just it's it's to learn this thing. It's like right. Those are great melodies. This is a great line here. I love that line. And then... And this is a great chord. Right? That's so useful. If you guys are straight blues players, right? Or, right? It's so, all of these things are so useful and you're not gonna get them under your hands if, you're, if you see it out of context. You want to see it as this. Colin, did you, Colin, you've been super polite and quiet, but I know that you've got some questions. I can see it. And we've got probably <laughs> eight minutes before they're going to shut us off, I think. So uh, I, I didn't really have anything to say, but I just liked um, this part. That... <laughs> like it, it doesn't resolve like you expect it to resolve to, to there, but it resolves to like an altered chord. Yeah, that sounds great. And you're playing a telly, so you get points. <laughs> yeah. Ted, all of us yeah. in the Ted Green group, you're the only one playing a telly. Really? So, uh, yeah. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, hey. Two tellies. <laughs> Two tellies. That was big points um, for that. Um, you know, yeah. again, so here, here's my thinking since we have a few minutes. We can meet every week. At some point, if it gets like the group is really committed, I'll upgrade to pro to host this. It just it costs a bit of money, and I – you know, I'm just, oh, a yeah. you know, it's just, that's how it is. I, I had my last Ted Green CD in the last four weeks had 20,000 streams. Mike Stern called me to say he liked it and 18 people have downloaded it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you can see that I'm not making a lot of money from Ted Green, it's, it's, which is fine. I, I'd rather do this, to be honest. I'd really rather meet with people who want to explore Ted's works. So, um, let us know how we can support you, John. If it yeah, is. please. Yeah, please do. I'm happy to. That's very yeah, um, good. Just I, I, I'm selling the CDs to support TedGreen.com and Music Cares, which is the U.S. Uh, COVID relief fund. 
So if you tell people to buy the CD, it's like 12 bucks. The money goes to tedgreen.com. It goes to um, Music Cares, which is the Grammy Foundation. And it goes to a foundation called uh, uh, Team Trees, which is planting trees to try and reforest the planet so that we can all have our kids breathing. I don't know. I'm in favor of that. I, me I, too. Me too. <laughs> but, but what I'd like to do is encourage you guys, slow down, repeat sections over and over, develop a sense of fluidity. Uh, one of the things that happens when people do TED's chords is they're really in a hurry to get from the next chord to the next chord because it's uncomfortable. Try and get it so that you're holding the chord for as long as you can. Like I'm holding those notes so that they ring as long as I can before I move to the next one. So there's a sort of, it's, it's um, Ted would describe it to me as like singing. They're voices, right? These are voices. It's, that's why they're called voicings. They're yeah. voices and he would hear it. Ted, the amazing thing about Ted when you would actually sit in a room with him and play is he could improvise this stuff for hours without even thinking about it. But he's hearing all four moving voices, all five moving voices, all six moving voices going from one to the next and in the most, not just intelligent, but musical way. And that's what this stuff leads to. Um, the one I'm gonna send you guys, if you're still all interested for next week, is a gospel version of this same key, but it's a gospel structured version with three note chords. A lot of cool okay. three note chords. So it's even more fun. Um, and then if you wanna do more advanced stuff, like um, my sense is Colin wants to do more advanced stuff because I can, I can see the young guys champing at the bit. Um, break this stuff up. Okay, so with your right hand, really relax, do the 16th notes. Right? Because if you can get that up to tempo, I'll try. I'd have to practice it. But you guys can see that gets even more interesting. And then break those up so that it's not straight, but up. Uh, wow, I have to think about that. So you put the middle voice, you put the, if you're thinking like the lowest to the highest, you go voice low, third voice, second voice, fourth voice, and you break that up. Like I said, one piece of Ted's can be a lifetime of practice. And if you really want to get completely crazy, gentlemen, on your next gig when you're playing a blues tune with somebody, pull that shit out as your solo. <laughs> That's your solo when the guy's playing. And you, and you play this as your solo for the 12 bars and watch what happens. People are like, what was that? <laughs> right? the, bass, the bass player throws the drink at you. Well, that happens. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is what may happen. Yeah, that happens all. That's normal. That's yeah. Normal night. Um, I'd love to do follow up. So if you guys want to write me and ask more questions, and if you have suggestions for next week, we can go longer than 45 when I move it up to pro. But right now, I think it's Zoom just cuts it. It does. Now, and uh, let me let me escape this here. And then I uh, and then my green screen was a friend of mine lent me just for fun, just because I've always wanted to see what that looked like. <laughs> um, and again, please write questions. Be gentle with yourselves as you're working through Ted's stuff. We can, uh, if you guys make suggestions, like if there's something specific in chord chemistry or chord prog modern chord progressions you want to look at, yeah. got, or if you guys go to the tedgreen.com and find like a worksheet or a tune, if you go and listen to my two albums, um, any one of those tunes, I'll break down for you how I do it. But I should say this very clearly. I do like on the first CD, I do Ted's arrangements. They're done exactly, but I improvise a lot in between. So it's not, it's not just Ted's arrangement. It's me kind of interpreting what he does. One of the things I struggled with, and this was what helped is when you've got like, so, you know, the, the book and it's just Kate, Kate you know, Chet, it's really, it's like a three, a two, two, five, one, and then in every key and in every position, I understand what's going on, but I wasn't. I found it hard to because I didn't just want to sit and learn it memory-wise. That's not sensible. I like doing it in in 
pieces like the blues that we just did today. So, yeah, I'm interested in doing that so that and then I can make sense of all this material. I understand why it's there, but that's more like a reference book, if you like. I don't, um, I don't seen it in context. You can see it bigger than that. Ted's chord, you're talking about chord progressions, right? Yeah, it's more than chord progressions is the one I've got there, yeah. It's, it's actually his way of showing how inner line movement and chord progressions can be expanded. And right. it's really, really helpful um, as a, like I would do a page for a day. So right. I would take a page, I would look at it and then I'd set it aside. And then I'd do the next page and then I'd set right. it aside. Yeah. And then I'd work my way through the book and then I'd go back to the first page, yeah. right? It's not, it's not, it's not, intended to be a guide as much as it is to develop your ear it is yeah you're heating because if you if you only are going to play well you don't need it right yeah if you want to play a more melodic uh, expression of how to accompany someone if you want to write your own solo guitar arrangements so that you can you know explore this stuff is really useful you know, and then the size of your voicings, like, like, even though, like his really crazy, um, you know, chords that are, you know, right, where you're getting these big, you know, you know, stuff there. Hi. Yeah. They're useful, you know. Yeah, and, no, absolutely. Absolutely. But, but you can also get really a lot of use out of just knowing how to play. Can you guys hear my guitar through the? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Because okay, cool. some of the times with the zoom thing, you get that weird phasing distortion thing. Not today. Yeah. Not today. No, it's good. Good. So, okay, questions for next week or questions about today, you can email me. Uh, I'm gonna post again in the Ted Green group with that list. Liam, by the way, thank you so much for helping make that. No worries. That's fine. List on that kind of stuff. So it was great. That's and nice. we'll see if we can get a couple other people. And I'm really grateful you guys are here. If there's anything else I can do, you let me know, okay? Yeah, again, thanks, thanks a lot, John. Much. Much. Together yeah. and, um, thanks a lot, yeah. Thanks very much, John. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Was this, nice you. Thanks, just John. check in as we go. Was this useful? Because mm -hmm. we're going to develop this format. Absolutely. I found it immensely useful. Thank you. Very much. Great yeah. start. Yeah. Okay. It's amazing. So we're all learning as we go, so this will be cool. Thanks, John. All right, guys. Take care, and we'll see you. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye.